let us know where you're watching from. Let us know if you're a student of Cindy's and what classes you've taken from her. And we're going to get started with talking about what your students want to learn next. So you did a survey. Tell us about what happened. I did a survey and I'm still getting responses, but it's really fun to hear directly from my students because I'm thinking, well, this is what I should do next, but I know it's important to hear directly from them. And then one of the things that keeps coming up is court dress, of course. I would say at least half the people I've heard from so far are asking for court dress how to diagram the face, how to make skin tones, how to paint hair and design. So that's probably coming next or very soon. Um, some other interesting answers, and I do really listen. I love this one. Like, I painted my granddaughter, but I can't finish it because I don't know how to paint her face. So this will be good because one of the lessons, of course, is my beautiful granddaughter that I'm painting. But I want to have um, different ages. In there, I'll probably do three is what I'm thinking of doing smaller packages. And that that'll be it in you know different colors of hair. And I think that'll be a fun new program. Okay. And somebody asked if I could do ocean waves, oh. and they are in my what it was by the B program. So I'm going to do a live webinar pin along wow. on painting waves. So that's that's coming really soon, probably next week for my watercolors by the C group. And I have a feeling I needed to do that still. Watercolors by the Sea has 12 modules in it. It's, it's got a lot of stuff, but that is the one thing that I think I, I can add. Um, I'm getting a lot of re uh, requests for landscapes. Mm. And we know in landscapes, there's a wide selection for landscapes. And since I live in Utah and I'm going to be doing a Utah workshop here this summer. Okay. We'll probably develop um, Utah landscapes. Mm. And what's nice with Utah is we have the canyons, we have the mountains, we have rocks, we have rivers. There's so much to choose from. But then our country alone has so many beautiful spots. So I guess I'll have to go on some road trips <laughs> and continue to find more landscapes to paint. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I love all of those ideas. I mean, I they all sound great. So I, I think you mentioned portraits, so that maybe is coming first. Oh, no. Well, your ocean waves, that's next week. So... <laughs> So that's for people who are already in your watercolors by the sea group, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And right now, uh, we're just taking people on the wait list for that, right? For the next round. Right. We'll open that up fairly soon. Right now, I have quick sketch yes. open. And, and we're um, excited about that. And Pink Tuscany is is getting worked on quite a bit. I've been doing a vineyard oh. meeting for that this week, and it's really working out beautifully. Um, there's always more to paint. There's no end. <laughs> this one, I really love the responses from this person. She wants to learn about painting people, but also how to paint cars, animals, horses, sheep, cows, um, and a night sky. <laughs> wow. So it looks like I could do, oh, the animals, horses, sheep, and cows. I could do a, um, a farm series, <laughs> right? I love the barn up in Park City. So I can start with that and expand. I do have some pretty good horse and cow and sheep pictures. So you never know. Where's that one painting you have with the barn? Is that in Park City or is that somewhere mm -hmm. else? Oh, okay. I love that one. 
I did too. So I like to paint. It's the McPullen Barn in Park City. Okay. And I do a workshop there um, at least once a year. And I may be doing more this summer. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. But I did it at least three days there last year. It's absolutely gorgeous. So cool. I'm just putting Park City Barn because I really love that mm -hmm. one. Yeah, if you say Park City Barn, it's kind of an American icon. Oh. There's a big flag hanging on the front of it, and you you can't help but stop and look at it. It's a painting just waiting to happen. So is that pretty much what you see? Do you like look around now and you don't really see the things that we see? You see paintings waiting to happen? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You, when you start to see things that, well, it's like a photographer sees photographs that they want right. to take. Or, and a lot of people are wonderful photographers and paintings, it's the same, same thing. I think it's a blessing. Nice. Nice. It's I love it. Like that. Um, other ideas. This one, there's some great ideas. Of course, more landscapes. Okay. Um, Rocks in a stream, snow-covered mountains, glaciers, rough oceans. Um, oh, landscapes in the U.S., Pacific Northwest, which I lived there for many years, so I can I have plenty of pictures to choose from. And more on trees. Trees could be a good package, but there's no end. There's so many options, so many subjects to choose from. That is a lot. So I've just been taking notes on like some of yeah. the things that you mentioned and what people want to see. So more landscapes. I do love the landscapes. Um, mm -hmm. I really love, oh, is it, they might be Utah. It's the ones with the rock, like those yeah, well, shapes. Rocks. You showed it last time and I love those. I love doing, here's just a little, a little one. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, I love, we are going to go on a tour as soon as we can get out of here. Yes. I've got to go south. I want to go to Zion. I want to go to Bryce Canyon. I want to go to Moab and Canyon Lands. There's so much here in Utah that I want to um, explore. So, and then, okay, so I know that, you know, you've been in Utah for a little while. Have you <laughs> been to all of those places or will that be like a chance for you to go? I've been to all those places at different times of my life. Oh, okay. But recently, um, I've been to Zion quite a bit. And so, you know, this is Zion. Mm -hmm. And this one is actually near Park City. Okay. Right here. Um, every one of my paintings is from one of my own photographs. So mm -hmm. I have to but I haven't been to Moab for over 20 years. And my vision of what works well for a painting, for a lesson, is so different than it was 20, 30 years ago. Oh, right. And so I need to go back. And Bryce, I haven't been to Bryce since I was nine or ten. So it's on my vision board. Now, Bryce seems like it would be tougher because it's got those structures that are all very intricate and busy. So I can't wait to see what you come up with. Somewhere I have a painting from Bryce that I did with one of my students who had her own picture of Bryce. Uh -huh. And and yeah, I've spent a lot of time looking at it. Yeah. But it's, yeah, I'm going back as soon as I can get out of here. My grandmother worked there when she was a teenager. And I'm, I'm feeling called to go to Ruby's Inn where she worked forever ago. And for people who know Bryce, they know what Ruby's Inn is. Oh, wow, cool. Um, okay, some of the other things you mentioned, okay, snow covered mountains, of course, I love snow and I love the mountains. Mm -hmm. So I'm always excited to see those um, glaciers. I mean, 
this is to me this is important because a lot of our glaciers are melting so like catch them while you can i mean if you already have photos but um i do know. i you know we had a fishing boat in alaska oh that's so right and as a family we went up to alaska quite a few times and i remember watching the glacier as it came down to the water and i think they call it calving yes where the pieces break off it's just amazing it, it's like almost makes your heart stop every time so beautiful and you recognize how fragile yes our planet is yes yes i think that the travel industry is going to have a huge boom as soon as we get past all of this i mean yeah we have to go somewhere right now we can paint it paint it from our photographs yes. fortunately i was thinking this morning you know i'm really lucky that i've been to so many places that i have a bazillion photographs yes to work from nice so do people ever um you know take the photograph and then send it to you and say Cindy, paint this, please. <laughs> Is that oh, something that people do? Commissions. Okay. <laughs> and I'm actually working on one right now. Oh. Um, I prefer painting from my own photographs because then it's my experience. Yes. You know, and I always tell my students, learn from what I'm doing here, but apply it to your own photographs. So I may teach a lesson on how to paint a dog, but go paint your dog or your cat. Yeah. You know, another animal using the same technique. And the same thing with the portraits. You might watch the way I paint a portrait, but then apply it to a portrait of somebody you know. Mm -hmm. It's the concepts that I'm teaching that work with anything related. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, let's see. You also mentioned landscapes in the U.S., Pacific Northwest. And of course, I want you to come back up here because I'm yeah. in Oregon. So that's always good. Um, the wine country, the vineyards are really beautiful. So, yeah, the Northwest, there's so many greens. Yes, there's a lot of green trees, is what mm -hmm. you mentioned too. Um, yeah, atmosphere. You have the, the mist and the fog and the rainy days and the sun, you know, the beautiful sunlight. Uh, I lived in Seattle for eight years and in Oregon for 16. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time in the Northwest. Yeah, yeah. And you can go there. Yeah, you know, the series kind of developed as as I follow my heart, you know, where should I go next? And getting this feedback is really help, helpful. Um, let's see, I did, oh, the trees. Trees, I've done workshops on trees. And so it would be pretty easy for me to do a simplified version of trees. You know, cause some trees have, you know, there's, trees that are a deep dark green some are like olive trees are sort of a silvery green and then cypress trees are blue green so that would be fun I'll do a whole series on that i didn't even think of that and i yeah. should mention that um i peeked in one of your groups and it looks like nancy phillips says hi cindy miss your cute face <laughs> That's my cousin. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Thanks for supporting Cindy and watching and saying hi. Um, if you do click through to the original post in Sacred Fire Creative and type your comments there, I can actually bring those up on the screen, typically. Um, so if you have questions for Cindy or if you have certain things that you want her to paint or teach next, um, definitely type those into the comments. I think those are all really good. I I actually really love too that you mentioned that you are um you're painting ocean waves for watercolors mm -hmm. by the sea because I feel like that's 
there's so many different kinds of waves. I mean, you could do a whole nother series just on ocean waves, right? So because watercolors by the sea, you already have so much in there, but it makes sense that, you know, people want to learn the ocean waves. Yeah, we have waves from far away and, and, you know, water hitting the beach, but a real focus on a wave is, is almost a dramatic abstract in a way. And they're a little challenging, but I think that's why I haven't done it yet. But I have taught a workshop on cleaning the waves from Carmel. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to do that next week. Nice. So mm -hmm. I'm curious, um, this is just a question that I would have, but so out of all these things, you know, you kind of reminded me that, oh, I think painting people, like the portraits of people would be kind of the hardest. Um, but is there something that you generally see that, okay, this is the hardest for my students, or this is one of those subjects that only more advanced students should try? <laughs> you know, I waited years before I even try a portrait. I was really intimidated by portraits. And my aunt Ellie Beacon is really well known for a beautiful portrait. So I took one of her workshops and she showed us how to paint a portrait when we were in New Mexico. She hired, this guy came by and she said, oh, would you pose for us? And we all paid him, I think he made $40 and he sat there for two hours. Wow. I watched her paint that portrait and then it just all clicked for me. Um, the way I teach portraits is first I show you how to structure a face because basically everything lines up mm -hmm. in a way. I mean, the features are different, but the mouth is here, and the eyes are here, and the nose is here. <laughs> and, and so getting that down is like just sheep relationships. And then I provide a tracing for what I'm painting. Okay. So people can focus, they can draw their own, but they can also use my tracing and just kind of follow along. So once you've done one of these um, portraits with me, then most of my students just go like, okay, I'm gonna paint this, I'm gonna paint that, you know, here's my my daughter, here's my nephew. I mean, they, they know what the steps are. It's like once you get the basic steps, you can apply it towards another person pretty easily. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's really fun. I love doing portraits. Oh, that's so great. I'm so excited because I, you know, I've seen a lot of your different paintings and so I'm excited to see more, more portraits, more people too. And probably like, do you do like crowd scenes or scenes where people are kind of like just walking by in, shops and things like that yeah i've got paintings where oh, different places in here anyway where the closer you get to a person the more details you see so the further away and um the bigger the group the fewer details you oh. see so at some point you don't even put details on the face okay. they're just shapes and when they get really far away they're they're like, I call them carrot people. <laughs> shaped like little mini carrots with a little round circle on their head. And, um, yeah, so that's actually a whole other series of classes. Yeah, there's so much that I could do. In my sketch, we do some people in, um, in a cafe. And walking on the boardwalk, and and um, yeah, actually two of them where people are sitting by a cap in a cafe and walking on the boardwalk. So there's a little bit of that in there, but I know a lot of my people are ready for more. Yep, they're ready for more. I just put that on mm -hmm. the screen. Quick sketch. <laughs> you have an online watercolor workshop that is still open for registration right now. So mm -hmm. it may Just not be a few more weeks. weeks. A few more weeks. Yep. Just a few more weeks. Mm -hmm. 
So if you're watching and you've wanted a chance to work with Cindy, this is the time. Um, I know that you have a lot of videos on your YouTube and then you have a ton of materials on your website and you have a lot of free materials so people can check it out also on your social media. But um, I love that going forward, you mentioned last time that your webinars will be more like paint along. Um, yeah. That seems so hard uh, for you to be doing. Um, but you have this process now of doing it. It just became easier. And so, and it's what people wanted. It was the natural evolving process that came together. At first, I was doing live demonstrations. Mm -hmm. so, um, people could ask me questions as I was going. And then I had done a few online workshops with some of my students that were in Hawaii. So I thought, well, why can't I just have everyone paint with me? when I'm doing this. And it's not everyone, it's not just those in the group that want to. Mm -hmm. So I'm picking something really simple and I send the picture out to my my group members and then they come and they can come along with me. And what's really fun is some of them will post it in our private Facebook group almost instantly. Wow. And that is it's reaffirming to me that, you know, this is working and it becomes a community. Mm -hmm. There's an energy so that's created by us all working together. Yeah. Well, and it shows, um, well, that you're such a good teacher and that you have faith in your students because, you know, that, that seems like, like many steps forward for me. I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, if I wanted to paint, painting along, I'd be too slow. I, I, I would think like, oh, I couldn't keep up. And so I like that you're saying you keep it simple. You have the picture ahead of time. You kind of get them ready for it so that they can move into it with you. And some of them are just going ahead and, and posting it right then as soon as they're well, done. Well, if they don't, if they don't finish it, they can always wait a few days and then I post it in our private page where they can go back and watch. But sometimes you get so involved in watching that, you know, you lose track of time and, and, and it doesn't happen. But I like the, um, it's kind of a thrill for me because I have to make it work. I can't edit it out. Right. <laughs> It's high pressure. It's like your, you know, your World Series or your Wimbledon of what you're doing because they're everybody, everybody's watching and you're recording it for everybody. You, do you ever like start painting and then have the demo and then toss it out and start over? Um, well, usually when it's live, I don't. I, I just do not take it. Whatever happens, and I think it's good for them to see when I make mistakes, how I pull myself out of it when things don't work, because they don't always work. Okay. But that doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means you kind of change your direction a little bit and modify and, oh, well, maybe that's better nice. than what I conceived in my, my mind. I really like that. So, I mean, the the idea that it maybe it's better with a, with a so-called mistakes, right? So, yes, I yeah. love it. Um, awesome. I, what? No, no, I just said awesome, oh. awesome. <laughs> um, I did hear from, there are a couple other things in here that was sent to me that I wanted to share. Yeah. Um, because I think it's important for my students to know that I'm really reading yes. their responses. Um, this is what this, person said, I want to learn value, intensity, temperature strategies. And I talk a lot about warms and cools in my paintings. Ooh. I can occasionally make edges fade or disappear, yet control atmospheric perspective. I like that. How to create an appearance of looseness, yet keep shapes and values. So very good. 
um, responses to the survey. And all these things can be covered. I, I could do a separate video uh -huh. on every one of those. They're wow. great videos. That is true. Okay, so value, intensity, temperature, uh, strategies. How to make edges fade or disappear. Yeah. Which I kind of, this atmospheric perspective is something I just did in my vineyard for um, what the paint testing program. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited that they're going to get that. Well, they're getting um, that. Yeah, looseness, keeping shapes and values. It's those are awesome ideas. Those are great. So um again, I feel like well that's that feels like some more advanced work for sure. Atmospheric perspective. I don't think I even know what that is. No. Like um well oh. just think of your area where you live and the mist that you get or kind of a little fog in the air. Just I think of that as the atmospheric um, techniques. Okay. And when you see things in the distance as they get softer and softer and softer, everything is not hard edged. Yes. They, they get softer and cooler as it gets further away. Mm. Yeah, I like that because when we look into, we do a lot of driving into the hills outside of mm -hmm. McMinnville. And then when you look through like the valleys and across to all the other hills, the ones that are further away, like sometimes have like a blue tint or they're just, like you said, they're like a little bit faded and then they kind of just disappear. And there's just all these different layers. Right. So. That's right. It kind of gives you perspective of what's nearby and what's far away. And, and uh, it's kind of hard in a way. You know, you have to just gently sneak up to it. Mm. But I, I just did it the other day. So you'll be seeing that. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love that you said you gently sneak up to it. Yeah. And I feel like that's a... That's something I haven't heard before. And it's so oh really? Cool. Yeah, I love it. You gently sneak up to it. Yeah, you, you just it's very soft and quiet. Awesome. When, Yay. Anyway, I thought those were great. And and there's more coming in all the time. A luminous colors and movement action portrait. That would be good for you guys. You need to send me some of your action pictures because you're always on some <laughs> kind of adventure. Yeah, we, um, well, you know, before the season ended, we were really doing our part and taking more videos of one another and um, taking photos a lot. So we try to mm -hmm. document a lot of our action shots um, because we just never had before and it's you know it's so much fun so so we have a lot from this past season and <laughs> we especially like trying you know trying new tricks with snowboarding and everything so but yeah i i think doing action action photos action shots action 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 yeah i've done a series on the cyclists in bend oregon you know for the the classic, I forget what it's called, the Ben Classic Cycle Competition. So I've taken pictures there and taught some of that. And kayakers. Ooh. Um, yeah, there's something about, there's movement. You don't see all the defined edges when something's moving. You know that when you take a photograph, right? It's a little bit. Mm -hmm. So part of working with action is having that word edge move, movement in your painting. It's really fun to try and paint a little bit of everything. What's probably the thing you've painted the most? I would say light and shadow. <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> true. I can't, what do you paint? Well, I, I paint everything. You do. 
that I'm drawn to. So I'm not limited to animals or people or canyons or cars. You know, I like a little bit of everything. Whatever is beautiful. Mm. And whatever is beautiful to you could be different than it is to me. Um, but the concepts are still the same. Shapes, values, colors. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like even though, you know, what you're teaching and a lot of your workshops right now are watercolor, I feel like a lot of the same concepts and ideas would apply to other types of painting too. Oh, it does. Yeah, I paint oils. I just don't teach oils. But everything I've learned in watercolors applies to oils. It's just a different consistency mm -hmm. and approach. I like watercolors because you can take them with you anywhere yes. and instantly set up paint and instantly put it away and go. Nice. Oils, you've got clean, you got to clean up. Yep. It's sticky. It gets on everything. And I think it's wonderful, especially cleaning outside. Plain air oils. Nice. I um so I have a kind of a funny question for you. Um mm -hmm. so and I don't <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to bring him up. Um, so he's, he may be out there listening, who knows, but my husband, Jeremy, he works for um, a native plant nursery, right? And so he's just out in nature a lot. And um, he's, he has like a lot of hobbies, but one of his newest hobbies is he's been collecting pigments. Uh -huh. And so um, I know you need to like either mix them with something like um there's some kind of sap that you can mix it with to get the right consistency but then also um he learned how to do some screen printing with these these like natural pigments mm -hmm. um so i know this is like the the it's really cool it's the pigments are beautiful because of course they're natural pigments but um you know they're all organized by his like different colors and everything mm -hmm. so i thought wow maybe one day cindy you would have your own like paint line or something like that or i don't know just random ideas <laughs> you're like no um <laughs> this is like where i go my head's like oh. well i i love daniel smith watercolors they travel all over the world to get their pigments, just like your husband. I mean, they've gone to South America and all over Europe. They travel incredible places to make these perfect, easy little tubes of paint. <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know, they mix it. It's gum Arabic, I think, that's in there. And I like just ordering my paint and having it <laughs> delivered. So there are some artists that go that far. It's just like there's only so many hours in a day. Right. Yeah. And I've even bought the pigments in Rusium, where they get a lot of pigments for the earth sienna colors. Uh huh. They're still in the containers. I've had them for ten years <laughs> <laughs> with them. So I think that's a great idea for your husband. To yeah. Do. yeah. I love to see what he paints with it. Oh, funny. Well, That's see. good to know. Good to know. And you get to talk about Daniel Smith because you are a Daniel Smith painter. And I think that's amazing. Everybody who paints has heard of Daniel Smith paints. So, you know, they're extremely reputable and mm -hmm. you love them. So that's great. I do. They've got great colors and they don't fade. They're consistent and there's such a variety. I think they have more variety than anyone. I'm really into those earth tones like you talked about. Yeah. And they're not all in my palette because I had to limit my palette to so many colors. Oh. But I probably have 30 wow. earth tones from Daniel Smith, just earth tones in my bucket of paints. Wow. That's, that's pretty, it's fun to get into that. I think if I do my Utah, series, I get to 
pull some of those colors out. Ooh, fun. And earth and tiger eye genuine, you know, these really granulated colors that do wonderful textures. Cool. I can't wait to see. It's going to be so fun. Um, yes. So anything else you want to add before we wrap up and say bye to everybody today? Oh, you know, it's, it's been really fun doing these. I'm always I'm never sure what we're going to talk about. <laughs> we never things to talk about. Um, we always find something to talk about. And it's, yeah. it's awesome to hear all the ideas from your students on what they want to learn. So that's a great one. Um, yeah, I hope they keep filling out the surveys. Yeah. And even if they're not in one of my groups, they can add ideas into my Cindy Briggs art. Facebook page, they can post things in there because I want to be doing not only what I think people want, but I want to hear what they actually want. And that influences um, the direction that I may go in my programs. It, it's wonderful to get feedback. Yeah. So if you're watching this today and you're thinking, oh, I want to learn. Um, let us, yeah, let us know. Type in the comments and make sure mm -hmm. it gets to Cindy about, you know, what exactly you want to learn, whether it's um, different subjects or different techniques. And all, I love um, all the comments. It shows a huge range of what there is. And there's just, it feels infinite. There's so much. You're not going to stop teaching anytime soon because there's so much. No, and there are more ideas out there. It's just I covered a few of them. Yeah. But it, you start to see a theme. You know, you hear enough from enough people. It's like, okay, I need to do some portraits. And I need to do some landscapes. You know, and, and that may be what's coming next. I love it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Cindy. It's been so fun chatting with you today. And I look forward to what we come up with next time. And um, say bye to everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely share this if you've been watching on live or on the replay. Thank you. Thanks.